Uh, buying Kiloa was an adventure on its own. Um, I came here with Alexandra, my eldest daughter, when she was five years old. And convincing a five-year-old that buying a castle is a good idea, it's not too difficult. It was a ruin, as you know, there were no roof on the house for over 70 years, trees growing inside. And from there, it started evolving and eventually getting on the road of a restoration that took 23 years to complete. The house started as a Georgian house, so uh, when they turned into a castle, they did not change the decoration of the Georgian house. That stayed neoclassical. And probably the rest must have been sort of a Georgian neo-Gothic, although uh, there's no real evidence in the interior and how it looked like. But I decided not to go in any of those directions, but rather do our own thing, got to go a lot earlier, try to incorporate architectural salvage uh, whenever appropriate, try to work with extraordinary artists who could actually in, reinterpret uh, the medieval period and then have a proper place to actually house a collection. And I think that that interaction has been a fabulous one. Uh, when I started collecting uh, medieval paintings, again, I thought you need to have some focus so that you can actually have a collection that tells a story. And in this case, the focus has been the Crown of Aragon. The Crown of Aragon, again, is to me one of the most spectacular uh, entities, political entities in the Middle Ages. And in the 14th century, with Barcelona as a center, obviously it expanded as far as the Duchy of Athens. Uh, by the 15th century, it had expanded into Italy, so Naples had become a very important center. And obviously, uh, the center of activity had moved from uh, Barcelona to Valencia. So I think that the collection that we have been able to put together shows that evolution, starting with a fragment from an uh, altarpiece from the 13th century that comes from the gallery, that shows uh, San Longinus, to then uh, having some pieces from the 14th century, and then obviously the, most of the panels are from the 15th, including the ones by Joan Cabrera. These paintings, uh, which uh, we have attributed to the painter Jaume Cabrera, were part of an altarpiece dedicated to the Virgin. Cabrera was an artist uh, very close to one of the great figures of the um, Catalan Gothic painting, Luis Borrassan. The style of both is very similar, and because of this, uh, sometimes it is easy to confuse uh, their style. These paintings, uh, which uh, we have attributed to the painter Jaume Cabrera, show the expulsion of Joachim from the temple, Joachim with the shepherds, Jesus dispute uh, with the doctors, the epiphany, uh, the death of the virgin, and finally two musician angels. On the back they show decorations from the Baroque period uh, that demonstrate uh, a later reuse, a recycling. These decorations uh, indicate that the dismantling of the original altarpiece took place in the second half of the 18th century. This Baroque decoration on the back, um, together with the fact uh, that the panels were trimmed, allow us to establish a direct relationship between uh, our panels and two altarpiece compartments that we also uh, attribute to Jaume Cabrera. Uh, they show the Annunciation to Saint Joachim and Saint Anne, and Joachim and Tan uh, meeting at the Golden Gate. They have similar dimensions and the same Baroque decoration on the back. The discovery of our six panels and these two other compartments allowed us to associate them with three more compartments previously known. One of them, which uh, showed the crucifixion, 
was photographed before uh, the beginning of the Spanish Civil War in the church of the monastery of Santana in Barcelona. This is a very important detail because it helps us to know that all these panels were part of an altarpiece that Jaume Cabrera painted uh, for the height altar of the church of this important monastery in Barcelona. I think that they're beautiful paintings. I think that they actually have, as fragments, a very contemporary connotation also, which I love. I thought that they definitely look wonderful in their state. I was particularly taken by the fact that in the 18th century, they had just become part of ecclesiastical furniture, which happened to many uh, pieces of medieval art that went out of fashion and then just became part of furniture. So it was lovely to recover them. Uh, in this particular case, when uh, I bought them from the gallery, and we all thought that they were by Luis Barraza. And it was wonderful that then through the work of our good friend Albert Velasco, we were able to find out that they were actually not by Barraza, but that was not a disappointment in any way. They are by Jaume Cabrera, but uh, we now know the church that they come from, which is the church of Santana in Barcelona, which I think makes them even more special knowing the actual uh, provenance and the church that they come from.